Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Way of Life. I'm your host Gus Holland. Today I get to sit down with Jeff Walling, owner of Zoe's Dojo and the official representative of United States Strongman in Oregon. As always, all social media links will be in the description below as well as the link to check out the Ugly Sweater Classic which is an annual event hosted by Jeff. I'm pretty excited about this one so let's go ahead and get into it. How you been doing Jeff? I'm doing good. How about you, man? Yeah, pr- pretty good. Pretty good. I know you're you're busy, so I appreciate you doing this. Um, real quick, just for the audience that doesn't know about you, uh, could you just do like a quick rundown of uh, what you do, basically, with Zoe's Dojo and everything? So I started uh, in Strongman about five years ago. Um, we started with a, a group of friends just out of the house. Um Spencer, Keegan, Trevor, and Cooper. Um, and then that kind of just kept growing just from, uh, you know, different events that we've been in or ones that we've hosted. And, uh, now, um, it, it won't be uncommon to have 20 or 30 people over here, which is pretty cool. So, um, funny thing about the, the whole Zoe's dojo name, um, Zoe's my daughter and, uh, even before COVID, which was lucky because, you know, prices went on, you know, up on equipment. Um, I wanted to get out of the commercial gym setting. So we started collecting uh, gym equipment at the house. And uh, one of my buddies uh, was like, well, there goes uh, Zoe's college fund. You might as well call it Zoe's dojo. So then it kind of just stuck from that. Um, But uh, yeah, I mean, it now it, it's crazy, man. The the family has grown uh, significantly, but uh, yeah, I mean, you know, during summertime when it's nice and we can do Atlas stones and stuff in the back, yeah, mm-hmm. it won't it won't be uncommon having twenty five or thirty people over here. It's crazy, really. Uh, but yeah, it's it's fun. Um, and then yeah, as as far as the uh, the ugly sweater portion. Um, yeah, I mean, kind of the the OG guys, uh, Spencer, Cooper, Keegan, Trevor, and myself. Um, you know, we had one day in winter that we decided to all get ugly sweaters and make you know a little mock meet up and just to have fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, that grew into, I think, year two. There was like twelve people over here just doing a little mock meet, um, which then went into um we did a little summer one and uh there was probably about 55 60 people over here and we live in a cul-de-sac so wife and I are like we got to we got to figure out a different venue for this cuz i mean there was it, it was fun but you know yeah. but there's uh, definitely people everywhere yeah um so then uh yeah then we started uh you know, booking the, the Albany fairgrounds and, um, first year we sold out in a month, which was, uh, mind blowing. Then last year ended in, ended up being in 48 hours. And I thought there was no way that, uh, that we could beat that. And, uh, yeah, four, four and a half hours, we sold out 90 spots. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's really a thank you to everybody. I mean, spreading the word, you know, yourself, um, all of our buddies and just it, it's uh it, it really takes me back a little bit it's it's really really cool so i love this community yeah uh, that's awesome um now besides the the ugly sweater well just for those listening so the ugly sweater classic it's a it's normally five events right or or do you, does it vary yep it's it's normally five events um we try to always have a press event um, a medley, a deadlift. Um, I also got into the grip stuff, same as my wife, uh, thanks to the couch potato guys up in, in Vancouver, Washington, love yeah. those guys. Um, so we always have a grip event at the end. Um, and then, you know, some other assorted, you know, one that trying to get five, um, varied events. So, mm-hmm. uh, they don't, overlap each other but yeah usually usually five events okay cool and so over the course of is this your third year doing it or have you been doing it longer than that 
So th- third year at the at the fairgrounds, and then yeah, we had we had the two locally um, at the house. So okay, um, but yeah, third third one uh, sanctioned through USS, um, okay. where the winners will you know actually get a national invite. So yeah, okay. Um, now and I know it's been selling out quicker and quicker. Um, have y'all seen any increase in like the um, class sizes or or have y'all been offering any more like like did you start off with no women and you started now you have women or how's that looking so the the class sizes are definitely getting bigger and Mm -hmm. this the uh so the first year having it at the fairgrounds we barely had any any women um sign up on it uh Mm -hmm. last year we had more women in the novice class than we did um all together Mm -hmm. and then this year we're um over a quarter of it is is actually women which is fantastic yeah um we didn't have any sign up for the pro division this year Mm -hmm. um so hopefully next year we have enough possibly because it sold out so fast that's what's always a hard thing it's it's good and bad right yeah (laughs) um but yeah this year uh at least in the in the pro class for the men, we have 18, um, mm-hmm. which is incredible. Um, so I was talking to Willie that that runs the uh, United States Strongman, and uh, he said that we can take um, top three to pro nationals, which I believe, in, unless I'm wrong, um, that's probably going to be the first uh, event that they're going to take top three. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it started out as. Uh, just the top one because they're you know as long as there's uh, six or more in the class mm-hmm. and then as long as that uh winner doesn't zero anything they get pro status and then go to to pro nationals um there at pro nationals they get a chance to be a uh, paid uh contract um athlete which is amazing because yeah. i don't know any other places that that do that yeah. um it's definitely life-changing for sure. Yeah. It's, it's really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, is it, I know just through following, like originally I started following, uh, John Walsh and, yeah. uh, that's kind of how I found out about you. And then, uh, I was going to buy some service sandbags and he's like, dude, use, uh, use the Zoe's dojo, uh, yeah. discount code, you know? And so then, so I found out about you and then, um, Basically, what I was getting at is that I see that you um, train him sometimes or train with him. Yeah. Um, is that is that your full time job? Like training people? Because I know you you post a lot of content, so I I didn't know if if you kind of just do it still as a as a side thing or how's that looking for you? I I do that mostly as a side thing. Um, my my full time job. I'm uh, actually a wholesale manager for uh, uh, Napa Auto Parts, um, okay. so I covered about half of Oregon. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I definitely do. Uh, I, I like seeing I like seeing people's progress. Um, John has just each week just amazing me more and more. I mean, he he's getting very strong. Mm-hmm. Um, he'll actually be doing the pro division this year as well, which is is amazing. Nice. Um, but yeah, I. I just more or less, uh, just kind of a side thing, um, mm-hmm. just to help them out. I, I, I really enjoy, that's probably one of my favorite parts of this whole thing is, uh, is, you know, see people lift their first Atlas stone or log or, you know, hit that PR. Um, mm-hmm. to me, that's, uh, definitely a little more special than even myself hitting one. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's cool. Um, as far as far as like uh event organization goes or directing are uh, do you only direct the the ugly sweater classic or is there any plans in the future for for more or or what do you think on that uh so currently just the the ugly sweater classic um John and I were actually looking at a couple other ones um we've been talking with uh, rogue brewery out at the coast um, to maybe doing a summer one out there. Mm-hmm. Um, 
the size of the ugly sweater. It, yeah. it keeps me busy about all year long. Uh-huh. Uh, but I would like to do one smaller one as well. And then I've just been trying to help some of the uh, the other ones in the area and then even getting a, a few more promoters going. I know yeah. Cassie, um, a real good friend of mine, she also does all the photography uh, mm-hmm. for yeah. Ugly Sweater Classic. Uh, she's uh, promoting her first one this year in June. Okay. Um, and it will also be sanctioned. So I'm almost... I guess more or less just trying to teach others so they can run their own shows. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's kind of my biggest thing, I guess, right now, just cause I got my hands full so much with, uh, the December comp. So, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's pretty big one. So, um, I could see definitely you being too busy with that, you know? <laughs> so, um, no, that's cool though, that you're, you're, furthering the sport, you know, within your state, at least, you know, and, um, yeah. that's one, one thing I've noticed about the strongman community is that it's very community based. It's like, not a lot of like, like, obviously there's competition, you know, but it's not like, uh, that mentality of like greedy, you know, where you're like, Oh, I need to, I yeah. need to like control all the, all the meats in Oregon or something, you know, like anything yeah. like that, you know? So. That's pretty cool. That's one thing I do love about this community is, um, I mean, you even see it at comps and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. There could be guys in the same class competing against each other. You know, one could be in first place, one could be in second place. And the guy in first place is cheering on the guy in second place because he wants them just to do good. I mean, it's, I I love this sport so much. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah. Yeah. that's, (laughs) That's cool. Um, so I noticed, is this the first year for the, uh, ugly sweater that you're going to be incorporating the Denny stone lift? Yes. Uh, okay. we just got finished with those ones. Um, I've always wanted to have, uh, a Denny stone type lift to it. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, uh, we got a bunch of, a bunch of different ones from, uh, Corey that's next to me. Um, drilled some holes in it, put the epoxy in it. And Brian and I gave him a test run the other day and, Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're holding up, which is good. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I've been, I've been following the stories and everything. It's like, man, like for, for some boulders, uh, those are some beautiful rocks, man. (laughs) Like the way y'all finish them and everything. That's, that's really nice. I mean, and it, I'm a, I mean, I've never lifted them obviously, but I'm assuming does that, um, that sealant does that help like does it make them smoother or like if you actually had to pick them up with it you know make them less porous yeah so um john actually turned me on to this uh sealer uh mm-hmm. when we make atlas stones and stuff um with the tack cloth or like uh we use uh will ramirez's uh liquid tacky quite a bit yeah. um it just gives it a little bit more um grip to it and it doesn't make them uh because like any of the atlas stones that aren't sealed they'll just be covered in dust and the tacky doesn't really stick very well okay Um, so john and i were talking and we're like well let's go put them on the natural stones as well because uh we'll have um husafel looking type ones for Mm -hmm. carry event this year um so we just been sealing them with the with the sealer that uh he turned me on to and uh so far on the trial runs it's it's been working pretty well so yeah okay that's cool and um, makes it give it a nice wet look <laughs> yeah yeah no for sure i i saw that so a while back um i had talked to ken from cerberus on the on the podcast and i talked to him about the denny stones and then uh and so it was cool to see them come out with those Denny stone handles. Um, yes. so I'm, I'm that's, that's on the list to be my next purchase <laughs> to get my own Denny stone handles. I, I love those ones, man. That's uh that's what the pro class and super heavyweights will be using on those, uh, those 851 combined, uh, yeah. Denny, you know, yeah. quote unquote Denny stones that, that we have here. So, yeah. um, yeah, that front handle is definitely, uh, hard on the grip it's it's a thicker one so yeah for sure uh, um we uh for that event are you going to be 
live streaming that or is there some some place that some people can check that out if they're out of state or anything yes yeah, so um my uncle runs uh the it department for a um the a local college here uh, so he's volunteered every single year that we ran it at Albany to run a uh, live feed. Um, so we usually just run it through Facebook just because it's seems to be the most stable um, in that building. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, if you just follow the ugly sweater classic on, on Facebook um, you can, you can watch the past two years there as well. Okay. Um, and then, and then we'll have it again, uh, this year. And, um, for all the sponsors like yourself, which I really, really appreciate, uh, oh, yeah. we have, uh, their logo on the, on the, uh, bottom left as well. And mm. it kind of just cycles through the, the different ones throughout the day as well. So, um, try to give you guys as much publicity as possible because, uh, we wouldn't be selling out in, in, you know, one day without, uh, all the support. So. We appreciate yeah. it. Oh yeah, no, no problem. I'm looking, looking forward to it. Um, I'm actually. Do y'all do y'all allow spectators at that, or is it kind of more just like a athlete only event? <clears throat> yep we we have spectators. Um, I think we're pushing about 200 or so on mm-hmm. the last one. Um, it was about 150 range the year before that. Okay. Um, and then we had. Uh, over 500 watching the live feed. Um, so we had people across the United States, a uh, couple in Canada, um, a couple in the UK, cause, uh, uh, Sturgis coaches from over there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, uh, Japan cause, uh, Brian goes over there quite a bit for work. Um, and then even Australia, we had a, we had a guy fly over. So his family and friends were watching from over there. So That's it was, cool. uh, it's pretty amazing, man. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Um, so as far as uh, we've covered like the ugly sweater pretty, pretty well, but as far as like your experience with lifting and everything, like, could you give some backstory on that or, or like, did it start in high school or, you know? So I've been lifting for about 18 years, um, mm-hmm. started sophomore year in high school um kind of went uh, a few different routes um just kind of the normal uh bro type lifts at the mm-hmm. at the gym and then uh um have a bunch of friends and you know whether people balk at this or not i did compete in crossfit for a few years mm-hmm. um and then i decided to go i like the uh different implements and stuff that strongman does mm-hmm. um so I switched to that, put on about 50 pounds, <laughs> mm-hmm. just force feed myself. Um, and, uh, did that for a while, competed at Oregon strongest man, which was my first, uh, first comp. I took first there, which mm-hmm. gave me a nationals invite, um, competed at nationals, uh, last year. Um, got a little sick on the, on the plane and everything else. And, um, so I didn't do as well as I, I would like to do, but, uh, I'm going to be competing at quite a few more shows, uh, this year. Cause I'd like to get, um, a nationals invite for next year, which I believe, uh, USS will be in Colorado, which is okay. a lot closer than, uh, New Hampshire for me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. No, that's awesome. Um, okay. So what, um, I guess back to that ugly sweater. I I just thought of another question, but um, yeah. In like, do you have any plans for next year? Like, as far as events go, are you going to try and keep it about the same or or? Yeah, I haven't quite thought about uh, the events next year. There's mm-hmm. always a a couple that um, I'm always interested in doing. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes the logistics, uh, for how large ugly sweater, um, gets makes it difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, that's kind of why I would like to run one other one that's small, like maybe capped at like 35, 40 people. Mm-hmm. Um, cause sometimes, yeah, just the, the logistics portion of, of moving that many th- athletes through or having, you know, four lanes with, you know, enough equipment. Cause, um, 
I mean, some buddies do help and bring uh, a few things of equipment, but the majority of the stuff is, is actually out of my house. So, um, yeah. sometimes, sometimes the ones that I, I have in my head that I'd like to do, um, I need, I need a little bit less, less people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, um, yeah. Speaking of your, your home gym, that it's insane. Like even just when you post pictures, I'm like, I'm looking at the picture for like five or 10 minutes. I'm like, cause you have like something like, like every square foot of that area is, <laughs> has like an implement or like how many, how many Atlas stones do you have? Cause I've, I always see, it looks like y'all are out there playing marbles with them. <laughs> it's like, uh, um, I, I don't even know, to be honest with you. Mm. Um, we've got we've got 35 up to 440 currently. Um, John and I are finishing up a couple orders for uh, some buddies out in Boise. Um, and then after that, uh, another friend wants us to make a, a, a 500 to have here. So uh, mm. we got the weights and stuff to, to add inside of it. Um, but yeah, we we've got quite a few here, yeah. which is it is nice. So, mm -hmm. I, but it, um, it's good for the whole family. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Wide range. Um, yeah. So uh, I saw that John had created a a skeleton. I mean, a a skull shaped atlas stone. Have you have you had a yep. chance to li try and lift that? I, I haven't tried to lift it but uh i i have seen it and it it's gigantic it, it's yeah. huge uh we're, we're thinking it's like 360 maybe 400 mm -hmm. um but i don't know the size of it it's probably even bigger than that but it's uh it, it's huge yeah no that's that's crazy i i told him uh i was like one day i'm gonna lift that and he's like you have an open invite you know just like yeah he's like whenever you're in the area man let me know and i was like okay yeah, but, yeah, definitely, man. If you ever make it over here, uh, yeah. definitely hit me up. Yeah, for sure, for sure. No, um, I was thinking of like it's just an idea at the moment, but I was I was really hoping to fly out and watch the uh, the ugly sweater this year, but I'm not not quite sure on that yet. So, yeah, yeah, no, that would be awesome. Yeah, no, um, well, besides that, um, do you have? Do you have any plans on like you think you'll stay at Napa or do you think you're you'll try and transition even more into strongman or or some sort of like fitness centered uh career path, I guess you'd say? Yeah, so I I really enjoy what I do there. Mm -hmm. Um I meet a lot of a lot of people um because I travel quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Um Honestly, about the five, six year plan, maybe, mm -hmm. um, would be actually open up a, open up a full gym. Um, I still think I would probably still, uh, stay at Napa. Um, yeah, just because of, um, I, I do still enjoy it a lot, mm -hmm. but, uh, I, I would like to eventually have, uh, my own gym somewhere. Okay. Okay. That's cool. That's uh yeah I was just I was just curious about that I've like on this podcast I've had a range of you know like I'll, I'll have just people that just compete just for fun and then all the way to to full time business owners like like Ken from Cerberus and so I always yeah. kind of like to see the the mentality behind because there's not there's not just like one path in the uh I guess the fitness community you know like. So I yeah. like to see where people's heads are at as far as that goes. But um yeah. So uh about how often do y'all train over at Zoe's dojo? Is that like a daily occurrence or um you know, what, so usually the when... big groups or oh go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. Oh no, no, sorry. I'm having a little computer problem real quick. Okay, I got it fixed. Um <laughs> yeah sorry <laughs> okay but uh um, no problem anyways yeah yeah that's that's about the end of my question i was just kind of rambling so so normally the the big groups uh are usually saturdays um okay but uh john comes over usually uh tuesdays or wednesdays as well um okay. and then every, every once in a while and 
another drop in could happen. So <laughs> yeah, I got but Saturdays you. are usually the main ones for the 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 big amount of people. Um, yeah. My workouts, uh, just bringing all the equipment out, <laughs> just getting it ready. <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. That's, I mean, that I've, I've only competed in one event so far. Um, I did the Ronnie Coleman classic in Houston and, um, it was, it was my first time ever. Like, uh, well, last year was my first time actually training strongman. It was my first show to ever even yeah. see in in uh in person and it was the first competition so um i did i did better than i expected i was still last place you know <laughs> but it was it was insane um the uh i guess it was technically my first bodybuilding show too because like we it would be like um uh, power lifting over in this you know third of, you know it's a giant uh warehouse like event area and um so they do powerlifting in this area bodybuilding on the main stage and then we'd have strongman over in, in the other area and um yeah that was that was something it was a lot to a lot to process but i had a i had a good time but it was uh definitely definitely something different you know i got to watch it everybody set it up too, you know? And I was like, yeah, yeah. I'd be tired just putting on the event, you know, like that was, <laughs> or they, there's yeah. one, there's, or they, or even like some of the refs and spotters, they'd have to like reset the equipment, you know, and, and they're trying to do it quick, yeah. you know, so they can cycle through and, and we were like clapping for them because they, they're, they're like doing the same thing we're doing, but just, just to reset, you know, multiple so, times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, yeah. <laughs> They'd be like wiping their foreheads and they're like, Oh, we were like, you got it. You got it. <laughs> yeah. But um, that's why I was joking with one of my buddies that uh, helped us out last year at the ugly sweater, man. He was, he was sweating more than even the athletes. Cause I mean, some of those sandbags, I mean, the one sandbag was 350 pounds and, you know, yeah. have to keep resetting that even, even on the dolly. I mean, it, it's heavy, you know, mm -hmm. and then trying to, uh, rearrange it to you know how the next athlete would like it and everything else and yeah he got his workout in that day yeah for sure <laughs> um uh, for for an event like that does that i know it it do y'all start just like early early that morning or do y'all does it take more than a day to actually set that whole thing up so we usually move in the day before okay. um just because there, there's just so much um stall mats suck <laughs> that's yeah. the, that's the worst part about the whole entire thing uh mm -hmm. but it's got to protect the floor so uh moving those uh into the into the van to move them and then uh back out and then usually have the majority of people weigh in the day before as well mm -hmm. um just so we can uh, start briefing at 8 30 get them uh warmed up and then nine o'clock we we're uh go um, mm -hmm. last year was, uh, was like a blink of an eye. I mean, we ended up, uh, we were done with awards and everything by, by three o'clock, which was amazing for how many people were there. Yeah. Um, that's, that's crazy. Um, yeah. So at, yeah, my event, I think we were done about three o'clock, but, uh, we didn't have, we probably had half as many as y'all are going to have at that ugly, at the ugly sweater. So, um, yeah yeah it's it's crazy but um still good though yeah yeah for sure um the i'm blanking out here <laughs> um so as far well hold on one second i'm sorry okay so as far as your personal strongman um training and and career goes i know you said you had a, a plan to try and get to to nationals um from how for people that are like unaware or inexperienced with how that all works um could you explain exactly how you go through like that i guess the prod the climb to nationals basically yeah um so any uh, 
any novice class, uh, they take uh, first place gets an invite to uh, nationals. Mm-hmm. Um, in open class, um, first through third get uh, invite to nationals. Um, and then you would just sign up and then, and then train for, um, wherever that is, uh, that year. Um, usually, usually the cutoff, um, is usually May or is usually the, uh, nationals is in June or early July. Um, so if it's after the cutoff or if they've already, um, filled up all the spots, then you would just have your invite for, uh, the following year. Um, okay. but yeah, I, I've competed at nationals in uh heavyweight. Um, so right now I'm currently, uh, cutting, um, I'd like to, I'd like to get to nationals in the 220 class. So, okay. um, so I'll be competing at Oregon strongest man in four weeks, um, at 220, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, uh, Again, in the uh, in the I- Idaho comp that uh, Alex and Miranda Copper putting on, um, I believe it's May eighth, uh, Idaho uh, Strongman Championship. So, very excited about that one as well. They'll also have a, a pro division. Okay. Okay. Um, so now that ugly sweater is sold out and everything, how many how many pros are y'all having this year in the in the division? So we have. Yeah, we have uh, 18 this year. Mm-hmm. Um, I was hoping for maybe a couple more uh, just to have a buffer so we can still say over that 18, just, you know, if by some chance, uh, you know, hopefully not, but, you know, if somebody gets injured or or sick, um, that's always a, that's always the hardest thing about uh, that time of year for uh, having the ugly sweater. It's always uh flu season so yeah uh, we did have a couple people out getting sick uh uh last year and and the year before so um but this nature of the beast yeah okay okay so you said that 18 number is that the minimum that they that you can have for an event like that for to be considered pro or so, um, so the United States strongman wants, uh, six or more just to have a pro division. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Willie, uh, Willie Wessels upped it, uh, cause some of these classes are getting very big. So he mm-hmm. said, if you have 12 or more, they'll take top two. Um, and then I asked him the other day because, you know, we ended up hitting the 18 mark. Um, so I asked him if we could take top three, if all 18 end up you know, showing up and, uh, and he said, yes, that would be okay. Um, which, uh, I believe, um, unless I'm wrong, I think that'll be the first, uh, pro event that will be taken top three. I, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know of any other ones that have reached that 18 mark. Um, some of them have been way up there for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. I, I don't know of any other ones that are, are, um, that many people, which is, which is very, very neat. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. No, it's, um, just in general. I mean, since I've been, I've, al- I've always paid attention to strongman, you know, cause I, I like in high school, I used to watch it on TV cause they had it on, uh, ESPN, I believe. And, um, so I've, I've always like paid attention to it, but it does seem like over the years it has grown in popularity um at least from from what i can tell um have you had any experience with that i mean i know obviously your events keep basically you know doubling in size but um yeah. what's your what's your thoughts on that it, does it seem like it's increasing yes it definitely is um and just talking with uh, a bunch of buddies that have been around it for quite a while I mean, you know, back in the day, they only had, you know, a class or two. And I mean, nobody's going to go, nobody's going to start competing at it, you know, going up against, you know, 400 pound guys. Yeah. Um, So once they, you know, have, you know, the different weight classes and the novice division, I mean, novice honestly is going to be where the sport grows. Uh, Nobody's going to just jump, you know, for the most part, nobody's going to just jump into 
to open class um, with, you know, other people that have been competing for four or five, six plus years. Mm -hmm. Um, So, so novice, the novice classes have actually definitely been growing um, quite a bit. And we're, we're starting to see a lot of uh, uh, new people into, into the sport of strong, man. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Um, I know since um, it's been, it's been on my bucket list to actually go try and attempt the, the Denny stones in Scotland. And so I, I said it on a previous podcast, but I'm, I, I'm just a little too excited about it, but I'm uh, currently training to, cause like we, we've been saving up for a family trip to, to Scotland, but then I was like, man, it'd be crazy if I could knock that out, you know, as a, a, a throw in thing, you know, <laughs> during that vacation. So um, I am going to try and, and lift those. Um, I think only last time I checked, I think only 220 people had, had done that. And so I'd like to, I'd like to get on the list, you know, at least before I die. So, <laughs> Yeah, no, that would be, that would be fantastic, man. That would be, yeah. that's a, definitely a, a dream for myself as well. So if yeah. you can go do that, I mean, just being over there, I mean, you might as well, right? Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, like I even looked, looked on the map, it'd be the first time in Scotland, but I looked in the map and I was like, oh, we could definitely, uh, cause you actually, you have to schedule, um, your lift and you actually, you have to send them proof beforehand of, I think they, they require proof of a 300 kilogram lift, I believe just like a, in a video format, okay. just so they can know that you're serious about it, you know, but, um, yeah, if it, hopefully that scheduling wise and everything, hopefully that, that works out. But, um, I think right before it'll be, It'll be a few weeks before the the ugly sweater classic. I think I'll be trying that over over in Scotland. It'll be cold. <laughs> that that would be awesome, man. Yeah, definitely get uh, pictures and videos and stuff. That'll be that'll be cool. Yeah, yeah, for that, sure. I, that is one thing. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh no, no. I was I was just gonna say that. Um, I think the combined weight on those is seven hundred and thirty three pounds. And so when you said, yep. um. I think yours would you say 851 for this year 851 yeah yeah that's insane it's crazy man. yeah so i know they're they're technically like not the the actual ones but they are like 80 pounds heavier or something you know so, so. yeah they they are a little bit taller on the pick um that's kind of why we we were standing on plates the other day mm-hmm. um so the the t- taller pick kind of I don't know, I guess would more or less even it out to they they feel pretty close to the to the real weight. Um yeah. cuz I did the I, I I submitted for the rogue record breakers last year um when my wife competed at the Arnold for arm lifting. Um so I I submitted for that and mm-hmm. uh for longest time and it it feels pretty close to that. So I think the higher pick kind of evens it out more or less, so yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, that's still that's still crazy. I know I said I said eighty pounds heavier, but they're actually like one hundred twenty, almost one hundred twenty, one hundred nine, one hundred eighteen pounds heavier than the, the actual. Yeah. Ones. yeah. <laughs> so, it's but crazy. Um, yeah. So how uh, how much higher pickup did you say they had? Do you know? So with with standing on the plates, they're still probably about a an inch inch higher. Um, oh, okay. okay. So I'm going to probably make some platforms uh, for all the athletes. I mean, so, some of the guys that are going to be competing in the pro division are super tall, so they yeah. probably won't have any problems. But when I try to um, just from the floor, um, I mean, the, the judge is going to be have to lay it on his stomach anyway to make sure they clear. But yeah, it was uh, it was like a piece of paper on the on the first attempt. So standing mm-hmm. on, on the on the plates, at least you could see that they were off the ground. Okay. Um, That's crazy. Yeah. No, the, um, when I was looking at the site for the, the Denny stones in Scotland, they, that's how they classify it as a good lift. They said, you just have to put wind, wind beneath the stones. <laughs> so it's just like yeah. enough, a little, little air gap, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, 
No, you you'll get it, man. Especially uh, like you said, if you're if you're looking at the the Cerberus uh, setup, yeah. Um, the pins the pins and heights are, if not exact, very close. Mm-hmm. Um, so the back pin's a little bit shorter with the the smaller ring, and then the the front where you would have your, I think the front's four hundred and. 12 or some, something of that sort in the front mm-hmm. um it's a it's a taller pin with a bigger ring um so it, it helps get you get you ready for it for sure um, yeah. i know there's a few other rings out there um like rogue uses theirs for their denny replicas um mm-hmm. but they're the diameter of them are a lot smaller they look really cool yeah. um because they're forged but they're uh I, I've got a couple sets of those as well, and they're they're not quite the the same. It it definitely feels different with the the Cerberus ones in the hands. I'll, that's all I'll say. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was reading on the site, and and it said that they got them like damn near exact to how they are in Scotland. So that, those thick rings, that's going to be that's the I think that's the main thing I'm I'm worried about is my uh just the the hand pain, <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's that's the hardest part is uh is I don't know, just about usually every single time my my left eye hurts when it when I'm done to lift yeah, them. But, yeah, uh, you're just like I was, <laughs> so much pressure. Um I watched uh I think it's uh Stevie Shanks, he's lifted them a few times. Um I was watching his YouTube video on on his uh he doesn't really call it hook grip, but it's something of that sort. Um, and that's definitely helped me tremendously because I, I can't lift them. I haven't really tried too much, but I can't lift really more than, I mean, even 600 is, is rough without the hook grip. Um, so he, he almost runs the thumb parallel to the ring, um, and then wraps the, the middle fingers around it. Um, but yeah, he's, he's got a very good YouTube video on, on that as well okay okay i'll definitely definitely have to check that out that's um that's basically all on all i'm focusing on this year because i i do not want to go over there and and you know <laughs> like fail you know so, yeah um but i think i think that'll be cool um it's gonna be crazy to see the the 851 pounds at the ugly sweater though i'm definitely at the very least i'm gonna be live streaming it and uh i'll share it on all my all my socials and everything so people can check it out but um yeah hopefully hopefully i could fly out just to just to watch it because it it looks like a really well well put together uh show so yeah. i appreciate that man thank you yeah yeah no problem um before I let you go, is there any um, social media accounts, your you know, Instagram or anything that you'd like to share? Um, um I mean, yeah, if, if people want to follow uh, my, my Jay Walling 136, um, that's that's kind of my main one. And then I have uh, the Zoe's Dojo and the United States Strongman one off to the, the side of that. Um, the United States Strongman Oregon one is pretty much just uh trying to promote uh all the comps in the pacific northwest so uh we put a whole group together um, with all the promoters and so just trying to trying to fill up everybody's comps you know from oregon washington idaho um and just just growing the growing the sport okay yeah okay well in the um in the show notes i'll i'll put a link to all three of those instagram accounts and then um I also, that. yeah, no problem. And I'll put a link to the um, the fa- ugly sweater Facebook too, so people can hopefully refer back Thank to this. You. Yeah, yeah. So, um, other than that, man, thanks so much for for being on the podcast. I appreciate it. So, I appreciate you letting me be on here, man. It's uh, it's awesome. So, thank you, and and thank you again um i know the pros appreciate it as well as i do mm. uh thanks for sponsoring sponsoring the pros so thank you oh yeah yeah no problem no problem man but um all right well i'm gonna let you go but um like i said i'm gonna keep keep everybody up to date on what's going on over there so 
Sounds good, man. You have a good rest of your su- Sunday. All right, man. You too. Bye. Take care. Bye. Well, that concludes the episode with Jeff Walling. I hope y'all enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed sitting down and talking with him. Um, once again, all of the links are in the description below. If you like this episode or others, you know what to do. Share it with a friend, rate, review. Those are the number one ways to help out the podcast, help grow the audience. I'm trying to get out there to as many people as possible. So any help with that would be greatly appreciated. I look forward to talking to y'all next week and y'all have a great day. Bye.